If you like the video or any other content on the channel, feel free to subscribe. We're getting closer and closer to 500, so subscribe if you like the content. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. This video is going to be going over two competitive lists for the Orc Champions. One of them I call Taxi Time because there's two Land Raiders in it and there's no Forge World in that list at all. And then I have a list called Forge Fire, which obviously does have some Forge World in it. Quite a bit of Forge World. It's mostly the tanks. We'll be going over the synergy with the detachment in these two lists, the game plan, and some of the strengths and weaknesses with each of these lists. So we'll quickly just go over the Custodes Army Rule and the Detachment Rule for the Orc Champions. Army Rule, get the Martial Kata. For melee, you can either pick Sustained Hits or Lethal Hits. I always say take Sustained Hits when you're wounding on 4s or less. You want to take Lethals if you're wounding on 5s or 6s. And then we have the Orc Champions Detachment Rule. And all this one is, is, it's pretty simple. In the Command Phase, you select one enemy unit. And until the next command phase, all your character models get plus one to wound against that target. It can be shooting or melee. And it sounds interesting thematic, but you're usually only getting a couple extra wounds per turn because it's hard to get all these characters into attacking one unit. So there is a little ways you can play around that by switching it if you manage to kill that unit. But this thing could be stronger. I think this could be a stronger detachment rule. I think this should be character units possibly or something else to add to make these characters a bit more stronger and a bit more weight in this detachment. Alright, so let's go over the lists first. So first we have the Orc Champions Taxi Time, I call it, 2,000 points. It does have two Land Raiders in it. So that is the big tech pieces of this list. And we'll go over the list for the characters first. We have two Blade Champions, no enhancements on them. And then we have a Shield Captain and Terminator with the Guardian Spear. Once again, no enhancement. And then another Terminator with the Castellan Axe. Just because I want to try playing around with that a little bit. See if maybe there's certain targets I may want to put the Axe into. No enhancements on him. Shield Captain on Jet Bike with the Veiled Blade. Just to give him a little extra threat in combat. And then Trajan Valoris just for a Deep Strike threat. Battle line, four Custodian Guard, three Spears, one Vexilla. And for other data sheets, we have two groups of four Custodian Wardens. They both have four Spears and one Vexilla. Two Land Raiders with the Hunter Killers and the Storm Bolters all kitted out with all the weapons. Four Prosecutors. And for our allied units, we're going to have Garia Draxis. And that list comes to 2,000 points. Call it the Taxi Time. Everyone's going to pile into the Taxi Land Raiders and just drive around the board. The other Orc Champions list in this video... I'm calling it Forge Fire. It is also 2,000 points, and the big tech piece in this one is the three Gladius tanks and Canis Rex. So for this list, our characters, we have two shield captains. Once again, one with the spear, one with the axe, no enhancements. A shield captain on jet bike, and Trajan Valoris. For our battle line, we have five custodian guard, four with spears, one with the Vexilla, three Caladius grav tanks, all with the twin Arachnus heavy blaze cannons, four prosecutors and then for our allied units we have the big boy canis rex and kyria draxis and that's the list like i said this is very forge world heavy canis rex so there's not a lot of actual custodian infantry models in this list but it's once again just kind of playing with these detachments playing with the data cards and just seeing what we can do to make competitive lists because these you're not going to play this list with your friends this is a very skewed list. This wouldn't be fun into friends. They wouldn't enjoy it. You really wouldn't enjoy it. And this is more for a tournament, just trying to get the best place you can with what you have. So we're going to go over a little bit of the synergy with the detachment and the stratagems with these lists. I feel the enhancements and the stratagems are kind of the same for both lists. It doesn't change too much. There's a little bit of variation, but it's mostly the actual lists that make a difference in these to kind of list. It's not the detachment rules making a big difference. It's actually how I've built these lists. So for the enhancement, Marshall Philosopher is probably one of the better ones. Uh, the reactive move once per game and the fallback and charge through the whole game. It's very powerful. And the others are mostly point fillers. Um, I could use Marshall Philosopher in my land raiders list, but I decided to go with Odit. I could have maybe possibly dropped one of the blade champions and just filled the full warden squads out. But I kind of wanted to run multiple units in my Land Raiders with four Wardens and the Blade Champion with a Terminator in the Land Raider. So this allows me to run those and just kind of have a theme for my list. And I do like the idea of the Veiled Blade Enhancement on the Shield Captain on the Jet Bike. It makes them a lot more lethal to smaller and light infantry squads and really good at hunting down lone operatives. 
So next we're going to go over these stratagems and how they kind of work with these lists. And sadly, none of these stratagems are battle tactics, so that makes shield captains just pretty much a free reroll machine. So you're not taking advantage of the big thing that the shield captains bring is the battle tactic for free, so making taking them in this list is just uh, doesn't feel good, but still, we're going to take them anyway, so you need shield captains. It's not really a detachment that you can build around the stratagems. Some of them are quite good, yes, but you can't double up or use any of these for free with the shield captain. So you're only really able to use these once. You can't take advantage of maybe the fort, feel no pain. It does hurt this detachment that none of them are battle tactic, making shield captains feel a little less useful in this detachment than they do in others. The stratagems, we do have Slayer of Champions, and this one is an epic deed, so can't use it for free. This allows us in any phase to select a new assemblage of might target, if we're able to kill the one that we've selected in our command phase, it's not bad. This will be a little better stratagem in our speedy land raider list because we can reliably get to our targets a little better with the speed in it. But once again, it's only plus one to wound, so it is helpful, but it won't really make a big difference in your games. And then we have superhuman reserves, and I feel this is just made for Trajan pretty much. It allows your warlord to reset his once per game ability on their data sheets or an enhancement. But you have to use it as you're using it, and then you have to wait to the next phase before you could use it again. So if you use Moment Shackle for the 12 attacks, and you pop this as you're using Moment Shackle, you got to wait to the next melee phase before you could use, you know, the 12 attacks again. Maybe you want to pop the 2 plus invulnerable save. Well, you got to wait to the next phase before you could pop it again. He could get killed, especially if you're trying to get the 12 attacks off. If people know you've reset that, they will try to kill him before you can get it off again. And if you're using 2CP to try to reset Trajan's ability, he gets killed before you get to use it again. It does feel a little bit bad. But like I said, you could use the Moment Shackle for a 2-up invuln in the shooting phase. Use 2CP as you're using Moment Shackle to reset it. And then in the melee phase, use Moment Shackle for 2-plus invulnerable save. Again, just to try to keep maybe Trajan alive in a sticky situation. But like I said, for 2CP, it's pretty situational. It's on your Warlord. I just don't think it's going to come up a lot, and nor do I think this should be a battle tactic stratagem, just because it's quite powerful. It's kind of situational. I think it should remain a epic deed. On to the next batch of stratagems, and these are the two ones that I feel have a lot of play with both of these lists. You can't double up on them because none of them are, are battle tactics, so it really hurts the shield captains. But for Emperor's Auspice, this can be in your opponent's shooting phase or in their fight phase. One CP, it gives your character model a 4 feel no pain. This is very good on your Terminator Captain, especially if you're popping that make damage all 1 for the phase. So if you're in the shooting phase, you make all incoming damage 1. You pop the 4 feel no pain on him, he will be a tank. You can drop him in front of him, the, the opponent's army, pop those abilities, and it'll make it really hard for the opponent to get past that particular character for at least the turn. Great stratagem. It really helps your characters. It's really going to help my shield captains on the bike stay alive so they can fly around, just be annoying, and do what I want them to do. That being said, it's still great stratagem. Still kicked your characters alive, but I wish this one was battle tactic. This one would be amazing if it was battle tactic just because you could double up on this. It really help you sort of make your army a lot more survivable, your characters. But this one will be especially useful in my Forge Fire list, the Forge World list, just because there's a lot more single characters running around in that list. So being able to four up feeling no pain those single characters, hopefully keep them alive, will be a lot better. It still be useful in both lists, though. Like I said, this is one of the better strategies, if not the best stratagem in our book for the detachment. And then the next one we do have is Earning the Name. I also really like this stratagem. Fight phase, and you can select up to two Custodes character models. And if they're attacking a monster or a vehicle, you can re-roll the hit and re-roll the wound roll. And this is our best offensive stratagem in the detachment. It allows our characters to punch up into those big, tough fight vehicles and monsters. And this will be useful in both the lists. This is another one. I think there should be three battle tactics in this attachment. It'd be cool if you could use them all, but there's a few powerful ones in here and ones that just wouldn't feel battle tactic thematically, but I think earning a name would be a good one. So now we'll go over the synergy with the final two stratagems in the detachment, and they're not that good ones. We have Vigil on Ending, and this is just for 2 CP. You can fight on death in the fight phase. 2 CP for a single character model to fight on death is rarely ever going to be worth it. Um, maybe if you really need to make sure a certain unit dies, you might want to pop this, but for 2 CP, not worth it. This should be a battle tactic. Soul of Mantle. So this one's pretty simple. It's just if your character can usually join a unit and that unit doesn't have a character into it and you're within two inches, 
you can join that unit. It's very situational. You can use it to try to get a little bit of an easier charge from a deep strike by joining a character into a unit. It's not worth the hassle. It's not really worth the setup either. Would feel awesome and lead to some kind of cool big charges over a deep strike, but it's not going to happen often enough to be worth building around. All right, so let's go over the actual game plans of these lists. So for the taxi time, my Land Raider list, I'm going to be piling some of these characters and units into the Land Raider. So this list is all about board control and pressure. We're going to put the Blade Champion with the four Wardens and a Terminator Captain in each one of these Land Raiders. The Land Raiders are used to push hard and fast into the enemy, drop off units as needed, but early board control will be very helpful for making target priority difficult. Do they want to shoot the big annoying Land Raider or do they want to shoot some of these Wardens on objectives? The Land Raiders once we empty the moat and the Shield Captain the Terminator armor will be great at slowing down opponent's army. You're going to drop these Land Raiders in front of the people. We're going to drop the Shield Captain and Terminator in front of armies as screens, as moving blocks. You pop all the take one damage for a turn, four of no pain. It's going to be really tough to kind of get past some of these blocks we're going to have set up. But you're going to have to get them set up early and fast just because you don't want to get overwhelmed. And then we're not going to have a lot of overall OC. So pressure to hold primary is going to be key. The shield captain on the jet bike is a great unit for secondary points. He's going to be great for hunting down lone operatives and light infantry units. Just like maybe some assault intercessors running around sitting on objective. You can fly up here with the jet shield captain and rip them to pieces. It won't be a super killy list, but it also should be a tough Hard to kill list with lots of enemy deployment zone pressure. We'll be pushing these land raiders up in there. We'll be dropping Trajan behind them if we can. Trajan, we're always going to put him into deep strength just because he's going to be a rapid ingress missile for us. Just a threat to take out something important or just maybe make so the opponent doesn't keep their backfield empty and just always has some people screening just to kind of keep them on their toes. All right, and every list has their strengths and every list has their weaknesses. The strengths for Custodia's list, it's quite fast. With the Land Raiders, we're going to get up the board. We're going to have the Blade Champion so they can advance in charge. We're going to have some deep striking units. The Shield Captain on the jet bikes. So we're going to have a fast list compared to some of these other infantry lists. And there's lots of tough, hard-to-kill units in this list with the Land Raiders and the Wardens. And the Land Raiders do provide some, not a lot, but some long-range firepower. They're hitting on twos, big D6 plus one weapon, so we will be able to get some damage through. Not as much as the tanks would, but the Land Raiders still provide some shooting threat. And the weaknesses to this list is the stratagems only work on character models. So I do have some other units attached to my character models, so they won't be benefiting from the stratagems. So that does feel a little bad. Not as much OC in this list. The Blade Champion and the Wardens, Draxus and the Land Raiders do provide the best OC in the list, but still not a lot compared to a full infantry list. And then Devastating Wounds, like all Custodius Detachments, is going to be devastating towards us. It'll kill our units fast, and there's not a lot we can do to stop it. So then flying and quick units can bypass the screening units we may be set up if we just have a single term air step to try to screen out some big horde units or some infantry walking. It's, not, it's all right, but if they have some flying or some quick units and just go around our move blocks and our speed bumps, it will make the list a little bit harder to play. We'll have a lot of stuff getting onto our primary objectives because we're not going to have a lot of OC, so if they can kind of get around our speed bumps and our, and our move blocks, they will be able to steal the objectives from us. So that's some of the strengths and weaknesses of the list. I'm sure there's probably more, but it's just kind of a rough idea of what you know to look out for and what to do with the list. So let's go over the game plan for our Forge World Heavy list. Like the first list, the Terminator Shield Captains are going to be used as speed bumps. You can start them on the board, try for a turn one golden light if you go second, or you can put them in a deep strike for some rapid ingress or just drop them down for behind enemy lines. Emperor's Auspice and the Terminator Shield Caps ability will really help keep these guys alive. The three clays grav tanks are going to be used to screen the backfield and provide very good long range firepower. Lethals on sixes if you're shooting into vehicles. Twin links are going to be re-rolling your wounds. They can be used to push and hold objectives too if you need to. It depends on your opponent's list. If they do have a lot of forward pressure, you want to keep these tanks back. But if they have a lot of shooting as well, you want to use these tanks to kind of push up and hold objectives, allowing you more of your infantry free so they can kind of push up and put more pressure onto the opponent's army. Canis Rex, we're going to use him to push into the midboard 
once the tanks have cleared out some of the anti-tank threat. You don't want him getting killed right away. You don't have access to the rotate iron shield, so you can't give him a 4-up invulnerable. He only has a 5-up invulnerable to shooting. If he gets charged by some big AP weapons, he can be chopped down quite easily as well. So you want to keep him back until you know you can bring him out safely and not just be a big waste of 435 points by getting him killed early. Yeah, so there's not as much OC than in the other list, so we're going to have to be aggressive with our shooting and slowing down the opponents to try to get on, so we can get on these objectives and hold them. Because if we allow them to get some of their other high OC units onto the objectives, it's going to be hard for us to steal them back since we do have smaller units. Sometimes we're just going to be holding onto the objective with a single character. Slowing down and shooting the enemy is going to be key for this list. We can use our long range firepower to possibly weaken some of our assemblage of might targets so we can get some of the characters in here and get the kill. And just like the land ready list, this list has strengths and weakness as well. So for the strengths for our forge fire list, we have a lot of long range firepower. Three Caladius tanks is going to be deadly to anything that sticks its head out. We're going to be shoot it off the board, especially if you can hide these some. So turn one, you can kind of mitigate a lot of the firepower coming in. These will help back up Rex just so you don't have to worry about them shooting so much at Rex. They one might want to shoot at some of these tanks because the tanks have a lot more long range firepower than Rex does. Rex is more of a mid board unit. Do have a lot of high toughness units with the tanks, with Rex, with wardens. It's gonna be a hard list to kill. We're gonna have a lot of big tough things on the board. So and then with our smaller infantry units too, so we just have a lot of just single characters running around, it's gonna be easier to hide these infantry units. It's gonna be harder to get shot lines onto them. And if they do come up for shot lines, we're gonna have three tanks and a big knight ready to fire back at them if they want to kind of take some pot shots especially if they pop out shoot a terminator captain you, you use the ability to make all incoming damage one use the four up feel no pain with emperor's auspice take all that damage and then obliterate them next turn with the tanks and wrecks on to the weaknesses so the weaknesses like all custodies now devastating wounds devastating wounds will tear your tanks apart they'll tear wrecks apart they'll tear your army apart so we have to be careful with devastating wounds be mindful who has them and be mindful of, of the range of the weapons with devastating wounds like the first one stratagems only work on character models so the tanks and wrecks are not going to benefit at all from the attachments or the stratagems over a thousand points of models that aren't going to be benefiting at all from the detachment but you know the detachments only works on character models anyway and you can't fill your entire list full of characters i mean you probably could try but it's not going to be the best list in the world there's also even less average OC than the Land Raider list. You're going to have to be even more careful with the OC and controlling objectives and making speed bumps and move blocking. Don't want a whole bunch of gargoyles landing on your objectives with the Terminator Captain on there. He's just not going to hold it. He's not going to be able to kill them fast enough to be able to keep holding it. And we will eventually lose that point. So you want to be able to keep people back off the points with move blocks and all that. Because if not, we're going to lose primary fast. And this list is also going to be quite a bit slower than the other list. Unless we're using these grav tanks to pressure objectives, we're only going to have a lot of just foot slogging infantry. Rex does move 10, but you want to keep him back some. So the first few turns, it's going to be mostly just infantry and the shield captain on bike moving up the board and the grav tanks back providing some shooting pressure. So those are the strengths and weakness of my forge fire list. I do believe that this list probably is the better of the two, but I'm going to try both of them just to see how they work, just because you never know. Maybe the Land Raiders just provide so much protection to your characters that you can jump out with your assemblage of might target, take it out real easy, bounce it around with the stratagem. You never know. So we're going to try both of these lists. We might find some magic. For some final thoughts of this video, both lists have some flavor and identity. The Land Raider list is all about speed and board control, while the Forge World list has a lot of anti-tank shooting and big, tough units. And I'm curious which is better, single character models backed up by a bunch of strong dash sheets around them, or smaller MSU units with maybe a Blade Champion with four Wardens, Trajan Valoris with four Wardens, maybe the Terminator Captain with two Terminators with them as well. I'm going to play around with that, see which one is the better of the two, but I still feel this detachment does need some love. This is my favorite detachment flavor-wise, but it just doesn't feel right. And that's like a lot of the codex. It just has some of the tools, just not a full kit of tools. It has some, every one of these detachments do have some cool things, but just not enough cool and useful things to kind of keep them going. Even though the codex is on the weaker side, I still enjoy building lists. I still like trying to figure out some of the combinations that might shine a little extra light on this codex, a little extra strength, just something we can hold on to until maybe some future changes do come. 
So I'll just leave you with the question of which would you guys rather see me use against the Chaos Codex? So I do believe the Blushing Noise Marine does have the Chaos Codex coming in. So we're going to have a few matches with using some of the new detachments. So which would you rather see me use? The Forge Fire with all the tanks or the Taxi Time with all the Land Raiders running around with the speed? See if we can kind of put some pressure onto these Chaos Space Marines. And so that's the list. I hope you guys enjoy it. I did put quite a bit of work in this one. There was two lists in this one, so it will be a little bit longer. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by.